with his followers. You're all lying to yourself. How are you lying to yourself? You lie to yourself by saying you have rabbis you listen to. Because you don't listen to them. Because your own rabbi wrote about this. Rav Shechter writes the following. Apparently, the sanctity of Eretz Yisrael arouses strong feelings of spirituality that one must take care to channel properly. These strong feelings can mislead even the wise to get carried away by their imagination and their desire to be original thinkers and in turn to strengthen Abu Dazara and Shmat. Shmat is destruction. Some rabbis have gained credibility by claiming to be disciples of Rav Slovichik, i.e. Ephraim Goldberg, and then have proceeded to totally misinterpret his views on these issues of Abu Dazara and Shmat. Now if you ask Ephraim about the missionary, before today, Ephraim will tell you it's a perfectly fine, unifying event. If you ask Rav Shechter, he'll tell you, look at the Shulchan Aruch. It's forbidden according to our Torah. B'Shem Hashem Na'asev Na'atzliach. Okay, so this is uh, a uh, unprepared, un uh, unannounced, uh, unexpected uh, uh, turn of events. Uh, we're having a uh, quick message for you guys. I uh, figured that since all of the messages, generally speaking, that I give you guys is via audio, is um, video, so we figured we'll just do a, a quick uh, video uh, to let you know uh, what's going on. Uh, so um, uh, anyone that follows us closely, whether it's the uh, WhatsApp messages, uh, groups, or the newsletter, or Facebook groups, all of that stuff, uh, saw that we uh, publicized a, uh, and reshared, uh, shared a, uh, a letter that we got uh, from, uh, uh, in the name of uh, Rabbi Shechter. Now, uh, Rabbi Elshel Shechter is uh, supposedly the, uh, the rabbi of Ephraim Goldberg. In regards to uh, this whole event where he's bringing this uh, pastor Mario Bramnik uh, of course, this uh, Pastor Mario Bremnik is uh, already, we've verified, we've shown a uh, endless evidence that uh, he is a missionary that specifically targets Jews. That's his life's work. That's his passion. That's uh, what he thinks his ultimate purpose is. There's really no question when it comes to that. Uh, so uh, we actually uh, have been trying to reach different rabbis for the last several weeks since this case came to us uh, and uh, as I told you guys in the video yesterday and uh, the last few days that uh, this particular issue has had an enormous amount of Yetzirah as uh, Rav Ades Shichye uh, says if you want to see miracles uh, you have to fight against the uh, you know the missionaries the Christianity uh, as that is the uh, source of all Tuma in the world uh, that's there today. Uh, but of course, at the same token, when you're going to go fight the Tum'ah, you're going to fight the impurity, you're going to fight idolatry, you're going to have a certain amount of uh, fight to the other side. You know, there's a, it's, it's expected that if you fight, the other side's going to hit back too. Unfortunately, you're not going to, you know, you don't usually expect the other side to be rabbis. You don't expect the other side to be uh, from Jews. Uh, but nonetheless, sometimes they are, as we saw in last week's parasha, uh, where we met the Erev Rav, uh, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai in the uh, Zohar Kadosh says that uh, in the generation before Mashiach, the, uh, there's going to be an enormous amount of Erev Rav, and he even says the vast majority of rabbis and leaders and people in position of power are going to be Erev Rav. Erev Rav is, in essence, Jews that are uh, bad Jews, even though they are religious and they keep Shabbat, uh, but they're, they're simply bad people. They uh, are... Uh, going to be the ones that fight against the Mashiach rather than fight for the Mashiach. So um, the point is that in the last few weeks since we publicized, you know, several videos, evidence uh, and proofs that Mario Bramnik is a missionary, him specifically saying out of his own mouth that he targets Jews, he wants them to convert to Christianity. We discussed a paper from the evangelism uh, 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 forum that took place about 17 years ago of the instructions to all the uh, 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 all of the missionaries out there that uh, of how exactly to go after Jews and there is a endless amount of evidence that Mario Bramnik is unfortunately one of those people that's not only a missionary targeting Jews but he's actually one of those people that actually succeeds in converting Jews to Christianity this is a fact this is not a theory this is not uh, some made a belief it's just a reality and we've shown a lot of videos uh, for anyone that wants to see them, they're all on our channel like everything else. Now, the, uh, 
this since this is the second time that uh, you know we've uh, fought publicly against this Ephraim Goldberg in regards to this particular issue, uh, of course the second fight is much uglier than the first. Uh, but uh, something unexpected happened uh, when we went to uh, get uh, different support from different rabbis. In the past, it was always difficult to get support from different rabbis for different things. But generally speaking, you know, five years ago we got a letter from uh, uh, one of the uh, Gedolei Adol in, in America, and we got from several others in, in Israel, and Bo Hashem, many supported, even though it was very difficult. This time around, uh, we didn't get signatures uh, simply because we had a lot of uh, gatekeepers get in the way, uh, that uh, even after I spoke to a couple of Gedolei Adol, uh, that uh, one of which I spoke to for almost 20 minutes, who specifically told me he's going to sign a letter not only condemning the event, but also condemning Ephraim Goldberg from even being a rabbi. Unfortunately, uh, despite that 20-minute phone call, and we had a couple of phone calls, but that one particular last call where he you know, specifically said he's going to do it, after that, the gatekeepers decided not to let him do it. And unfortunately, uh, this is a reality that I saw more than once. There was another case, another big uh, rabbi, well-known rabbi, where the gatekeeper decided to go in the way. I don't know why these gatekeepers decide uh, to get in the way, whether they're friends of Ephraim Goldberg or they simply don't want this uh, to be part of their life or whatever the case may be. It doesn't really make much of a difference. The reality is there's been a lot of Yetzirah. And also throughout our uh, calls and the different people that have been trying to call, many people have been trying to reach uh, the, uh, the rabbi that uh, Ephraim Goldberg calls his rabbi. Rav Herschel Shechter, and the main reason why is not only because he's his rabbi, but also because he wrote an article uh, some nine years ago called Experimental Judaism Playing with Fire. And this particular art article, in essence, highlights everything we've been talking about for the last uh, few weeks, where it is forbidden, according to Rav Shechter, it's forbidden, according to Rav Slovajic, it's forbidden, according to Shulchan Aruch, it's forbidden, according to Rambam, it's forbidden, according to all opinions, to bring a Christian missionary into a synagogue, regardless of what the reason is, whether it's to speak about Israel, or it's to speak about religion, or it's to speak about sports, or anything else. You're simply forbidden from doing that. And Rav Shechter wrote this article nine years ago, literally detailing how it's a shame how there are rabbis that call themselves the, uh, the students of the uh, Rav Slovechik and, and, and uh, students of Torah, but yet they bring and, and, uh, these Christian missionaries to their synagogues. So he wrote about this and uh, so figured that, you know, many people figured, let's call him and try to see what, uh, what he'll say about what his student is doing, what Ephraim Goldberg is doing. Because what Ephraim Goldberg said on his, uh, on his uh, podcast is that he spoke to, uh, to Rav Shechter and Rav Shechter said everything's okay. Now I know somebody that uh, knows about that phone call who literally told me about this phone call moments after it happened and uh, said that uh, what, Rav, uh, what uh, Rav Shechter heard was not exactly all the details but rather that there's a guy named Mario Bramnik that's uh, supposed to uh, come to, uh, uh, to uh, Boca Raton Synagogue, and uh, no talk of him being a missionary, no talk of him being a famous missionary, a successful missionary, none of that. And unfortunately, uh, Rav Shechter did not uh, know all of the details. Uh, for, all, for all we know, he could have simply told him that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, Mario Bremnik is an uh, unreligious Jew which is still forbidden nonetheless, but not the, you know, the point is, is that if uh, you tell somebody that this guy who is not a religious Jew is going to come to your shul, uh, but you're not going to tell him that he's going to speak to anybody or do anything, you could easily manipulate the conversation and get an okay from anybody, needless to say, from someone who trusts you that you're, you have a brain in your head. So uh, Rav Shech did not verify, did not check who Mario Bramnik is. Uh, I would uh, be surprised if, uh, if he ever saw any of the videos that uh, showed that uh, what he talks about. Uh, but nonetheless, this is what the conversation took place. But of course, Ephraim Goldberg likes to manipulate words and he publicized to the world that uh, his Rebbe, Rav Shechter, said everything is okay, no questions asked, and, uh, you know, and, and that's it. And we can proceed forward with it as if he's listening to Da Torah. Now, Today was a little bit of a turn of events. We have 24 hours before the event, 
and uh, we got a letter we got a letter emailed to us okay we didn't write this letter and uh I, my attempts to reach Rav Shechtel were unsuccessful I was uh you know calling the U.S number I didn't know that he's in Israel apparently he's in Israel uh but uh my attempts were you know did not succeed but somebody else apparently one of his other students uh from YU did reach Rav Shechtel again this is the story that I'm getting and told them the truth about Mario Bremnik and Rav Shechtel was livid about the issue and again I'm repeating what I was told uh was livid about the situation felt that he was misled by his own student and apparently wrote a letter now two versions of this letter so far have been published uh that I got uh and uh two versions of them the first one had many spelling errors and uh shortly after on maybe an hour later another letter came out with uh less spelling errors now quite frankly uh I don't care uh whether it's uh, there is spelling errors or either spelling errors I care whether it's legit or it's not now uh, whether it's legit or not doesn't really change the fact that this event is forbidden according to the Torah but it would be nice if this letter is real now uh, uh, what does the letter say the letter says uh, to whom it may concern it has the letterhead in the, uh, of uh, Rav Shechter's uh, uh, name on the top it says uh, to whom it may concern I do not usually like to publicize problematic letters when it regards to one of my Talmidim today however I must make an exception one of my closest Talmidim, Rav Ephraim Goldberg Shlita, is bringing a missionary to his shul. I feel that this is unacceptable. When I spoke to Rav Ephraim Shlita, I was under the impression that this Pastor Bramnik individual was just a regular pastor and was solely to speak about Israel. It has come to my attention that this man is a missionary. Given certain details of the event, it cannot be canceled at this point. I am therefore recommending that nobody attend this event. If one does attend the event, they should proceed with intense caution. Furthermore, I had written a letter regarding these types of events in 2012. I recommend you all read it. He is referring to the article that I mentioned, uh, Experimental Judaism Playing with Fire. That's, in essence, this is the letter. We, we showed it online. Now, there are some people, whether it's the uh, Rasha from uh, the CEO from uh, some big organization, they call themselves a Jewish organization, perhaps they used to be a Jewish organization, but they're, uh, they're no longer Jewish as uh, they're promoting Christianity themselves, uh, saying that this letter is not real. Some other people say that this letter is not real because it has spelling errors and because of this, uh, uh, and it's, it's a, uh, uh, the font is not dark enough and uh Rav Shechter wouldn't uh, write such a thing and somebody says that they spoke to the son of Rav Shechter who says that he didn't write it even though he's not with them and even though he doesn't really actually know this the point being is this whether Rav Shechter wrote this letter or not will be found out within the next I don't know 12 15 hours why once Israel wakes up Rav Shechter is going to be one of them, Be'ez Hashem, and he's going to have to address this particular issue. Why? Because apparently there was a letter written in his name. If it's legitimately his letter, he's going to say, I wrote this letter, my Talmud, Ephraim Goldberg, lied to me, misled me, or whatever other nice language he wants to use, and I condemned this event, no one should go. Or on the other hand, he's going to say, no, I didn't write this letter and I don't appreciate people misusing my signature for, uh, for, for their agenda. Regardless of which one it is, it's not going to change whether it's allowed to have this event or not. This event is forbidden. Now, again, I'm not in the business of forging letters. I don't really care if the letter is real or not. Quite frankly, it would be nice if it's real because it shows that Ephraim Goldberg is the liar we've been telling you he is. But I don't need this letter to to, to validate that. I know Ephraim Goldberg is a liar because I've seen him lie time and time again. If you just see my video from the other day where I showed you guys that the guy uh, is a uh, subscribed to some pornography channel on his Facebook page, apparently uh, he watches our videos, so he didn't unsubscribe he just made his likes on his facebook page uh you know a uh, uh private i guess unsubscribing to pornography is just too much for him to handle so he had to make them private the point being he's done many things that are obviously unethical and today topped them all off right after we publicized this letter i get a knock on my uh, on my door uh, so i get i don't really get many people come to my house of course my uh my uh, rabbanit my wife god bless her 
she comes to me, she says, Donald, there's three people outside. I go, I, I open the door, I see three young men with guns and, uh, and, uh, and a uniform saying, uh, you know, detectives or, or, or police on them. And uh, they, uh, they're here to talk to me. They have some uh, stuff in their hands, some notebooks and stuff like that. I say, yeah, we'd like to talk to you. Like to talk to you, okay? I mean, I'm thinking to myself, I didn't kill anybody, I didn't uh, 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 rob anybody, I didn't threaten anybody, but okay, fine, no problem. What can I help you with, officers? And they tell me that Mr. Ephraim Goldberg sent them to me, sent these boys to me, because Ephraim says that he's been getting, he's been getting death threats. He's been getting death threats via email. Now, did you get a death threat from me? No. So why, why are they coming to me? Only a Kadosh Baruch Hu knows why they're coming to me. Uh, because if I didn't send you a death threat, so what does it have to do with me? So I say, oh, do you know about this event? Are you going to go to the event? No, I'm not going to go to the event. Now, everything that I do is public. This is the stupidity here. Everything that I say is public information. Anyone can go and access it for free, whether it's via our app, the Bezat Hashem app, or it's on YouTube, or it's the endless amount of, 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 uh, of uh, vessels that Hashem provided us to give the information over. Everything I say is public. So if I ever threatened anybody, if I ever said I'm going to kill somebody, I'm going to beat up somebody, then obviously I have, must be uh, some type of sociopath. I must be some crazy person. But Ephraim forgot that apparently when he told the police to come to my house and uh, scare my three little baby kids that uh you know that maybe their uh, their dad's gonna go to jail no problem you'll just add this to your cheshbon now you're not only promoting idolatry you're also moisel you go and call the police officers on other jews okay so your judgment in in, in gain no will just increase the reality is rabutai is just as i spoke to the officers who were wonderful people very nice very cordial asking nice questions getting the answers understood everything i explained to them everything that we're going through i told them you can look at my youtube channel i gave them all my business card they could all come whenever they want perhaps next time they'll let me know ahead of time so i could invite them for coffee too but the reality is rabotai is that you see how this rasha merusha is grasping at straws grasping at straws to do anything possible to silence the 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 outcry that's out there the people from his own community that do not want this event are being silenced they even went to the youtube channel our youtube channel and filed a claim against one of the videos which of course they are saying it's copyright infringement we obviously know what we're doing the video will be back up within the next uh, a few days or so because we didn't copyright infringe anything we follow all of the laws the laws of the land needless to say the laws of the torah but this rasha merusha and his minions are going to do anything possible they will stop at nothing to silence the outcry for their acts they will do everything possible now again i always remind you guys we do not promote violence we're not telling anybody to go kill anybody we're not telling anybody to go beat up anybody you're forbidden from taking the law into your hands what we say in our lectures repeatedly because we know that there are sometimes crazy people out there so we have to say it we have to give the disclosures anytime i say death penalty i always talk to you guys about it's at the time of the sanhedrin it's the time of moshe rabenu it's not today we're not allowed to kill anybody regardless of what they do unless they're coming to kill us physically we're not allowed to kill them but the reality is is that i cannot be in charge of the whole world I say things according to the Torah of course there are going to be some people that are crazy that are going to do things and perhaps maybe he did get maybe he did actually get a death threat from some crazy person that crazy person is not my student that crazy person is not someone that listens to me that crazy person simply decided to take the law into his own hands and decided that maybe he's going to scare Ephraim into canceling this event now of course we do not recommend anybody take any type of action whether it's real or it's fake not a real threat and not a fake threat to harm people not jews and not gentiles that's not our business our business is torah that's what our business is we do not harm people physically we let a kadosh Hu do everything 
we believe in one god and we don't need any person to help us that's the reality Rabotai. you have to understand when a person is doing something wrong if they're in a, a position of leadership my job my job is to talk about these things and warn people and to at least let people know this is wrong so if Ephraim or any of the other heretics out there that we've talked about are doing something wrong that could put Jewish lives at risk meaning their spiritual lives or sometimes even their physical lives at risk I speak about it and I tell you guys what the Torah says about it I don't go tell you guys to go beat up anybody or kill anybody or whatever it is that people think in their crazy minds that's not something that I've ever said a single second in my life not even as a joke I don't even like jokes like that why because I know that there's a lot of crazy people but again the reality is whether he got an email or he doesn't get an email everybody knows that as soon as you get an email you could easily look up the IP address and within a matter of seconds know exactly where that person is and you know what they'll know it's not me it has nothing to do with me it's not something that has my name on it it's not something that is even connected to my computer and I told the police officers if you want I'll give you my phone I'll give you my computer I'll give you everything you could sit there you could take it just give me something to work with because I need to work but you can check everything you want they all laughed they said no we know it we just have to do this because we got a call from Ephraim and his buddies they're laughing at this I have more surgeries on my body than than than, than Ephraim has since probably uh, probably not but the point is is that the uh the, to say that I threatened this Rasha I don't need to threaten him I already know that Akadosh Baruch Hu is gonna finish him off at some point or another when the time comes but the reality is for for this Rasha to go and call the police on another person to go and call the YouTube police on another person he wants to silence us shows that the message is getting out there for those people that are seeking the truth at the very least our job is to have the truth available available out there we want the truth to be available out there so all of you can make educated decisions whether to go whether not to go whether to eat whether not to eat everyone at the very least is owed is entitled to see the truth when the only version of the truth that they have is the lies from Ephraim and his buddies that obviously puts a responsibility on us it also puts a responsibility on all of the Rabbanim all over the world that are aware that are aware of this situation unfortunately aside from Rav Mizrahi almost nobody spoke about this event no one has condemned it and even the people that agree that it should be condemned don't want to do it pr uh, publicly why they don't want to fluff their feathers they don't want to inconvenience their comfort in lives and unfortunately they'll have to pay the judgment for that too why because when you are in a position of of leadership you have a responsible you have a responsibility you have a responsibility not only to the people that are in front of you but also the people that follow you the people that read your work and if you're not going to speak about these things and think it's not going to affect you then apparently you live you live in a different world you live in a with a different God our God is going to judge each and every single one of us for the good and the bad that we do so again this particular event is a event that is promoting idol worship there's no there's no question about it Mario Bramnik is 100 million percent a evangelical missionary that is targeting Jewish people to convert to Christianity no question about it the worst missionaries in that event if it takes place are going to be in the crowd they're not going to be on stage even though Ephraim is a, the worst missionary on, uh, individual and Bramnik is the worst missionary but the most lethal missionaries are going to be in the crowd why because this event is open to the public and of course all of the religious Christians are missionaries all of the most successful uh, uh missionaries are regular average Joe people that have regular blue collar white collar jobs and they just believe in something they believe in their idolatry 
and they're going to tell you listen you know you're a nice person why don't we have coffee why don't we have this and they'll listen to your problems and you'll feel like you have a new friend and once they see that they found you in a moment of weakness and you've opened up that's when they're going to start telling you about all of the wonderful miracles that they saw because they believe in yoshke once they spot the weakness that's where they go you can you can read documents about this there are documentaries about it there are videos that missionaries publicize on a daily basis on a daily basis of their conversations with jewish people because that's their primary target their conversations with a shimon with a levy with a leora with a uh, whatever with all types of people that's who they highlight even in their annual reports even in their annual reports when they say how many people they brought closer to yoshke they'll tell you we brought this amount of people to yoshke and this amount are jews meaning that the jewish neshama has a special precedence has a special place in their ideology so to go and bring mario bramnik and then all of his followers to a place of worship to a jewish center to a synagogue is 100 percent putting the entire community in danger and there's no doubt in my mind that there's going to be major spiritual damage as a result of this event people will become friends with some of these uh, christians some of these missionaries and unfortunately not everybody in that community is strong not everybody in that community is aware not everybody in that community is going to be able to defend judaism in the face of the christian apologetics and unfortunately you could easily fall prey and there are some people within the community that have already told us that they have family friends or even they themselves used to worship yoshke until they discovered the truth and some of them unfortunately still are worshiping yoshke still worshiping jesus and this is exactly what the church wants this is exactly what mario bramnik wants he wants you to have your uh your uh, uh your guard down he wants you to invite him to um, be friends with you he wants you to think that he's supporting israel he wants you to think that he's your friend why because once you let once you let this 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 snake this cobra into your house that's it there's no there's no uh nothing you can do about it after once you let him in that's it you let all of his uh, all of his followers in that's it you have let hundreds of missionaries into your shul so again the event itself is forbidden according to Allah no matter who you ask if they actually know and again whether this letter is real or not we already know what Rav Shechter's opinion is he wrote it nine years ago had he changed his opinion he would have wrote a new opinion so unless Rav Shechter writes a new opinion about what he thinks about inviting Christians and Catholics into a synagogue we know what his opinion is we don't need this letter to validate it we think the letter is real it should be real but whether it is or not doesn't really make much of a difference because we already know what the Allah is according to the Rambam we know what the Allah is according to Shukhan Aruch which are much bigger than Rav Shechta could ever be and he would agree with that and most importantly we know what he himself wrote about it so again I don't care if the letter is real or not what it only thing it does is that it shows it's just simply another token to prove that Ephraim is a liar that's all it does that's all it does but even if I don't have this I already know he has enough lies and he's a he's a, promotes missionaries and he now also is a Moisel he calls the police on a fellow Jew even though we disagree even though he may not like our disagreement the reality is he knows that I never threatened anything a hair on his head or hair on anybody's head but of course he's gonna make it seem like we're the bad people and he's even gonna mock the whole thing saying on his uh on his uh page oh this event sold out thanks to a person that is promoting it so we don't even have to market it you stupid idiot you're marketing this event to Christian missionaries and you're putting your entire community in jeopardy but your arrogance will not let your eyes see but Akadosh Baruch Hu sees everything Akadosh Baruch Hu sees everything and Akadosh Baruch Hu says Ga'avat Adam Tashpilenu the, the pride of man is what's going to bring his fall I don't have to bring anybody's fall I don't have to beat up anybody I don't have to threaten anybody I have Akadosh Baruch Hu to do that and the reality is anybody with a brain in their head 
anybody with a brain in their head and a little bit of Yirat Shamayim is going to speak out against this event, is going to condemn this event, is going to condemn the synagogue until they fire this Goldberg. But unfortunately, not everybody thinks the same. Many people think it's perfectly fine until their daughter or their son brings a Christian as a spouse and then they cry to people like myself, oh, can you please help us? My son wants to marry Christine and my daughter wants to marry Jesus. Can you please help us? We don't want them to be intermarried. Maybe you can help them convert. The reality is, Rabotai, is that a certain sect within the Frum world is uh, not exactly aware of the Christian risk. They don't read reports and they don't care reports. Why? Because their arrogance is so high, they simply don't think that it affects them. But anybody that has eyes, anybody that knows what's going on, knows that the missionaries are winning. The missionaries are converting Jews by the dozens. They're literally publicizing videos every single day of their conversations with Jews that have gone closer to their idolatry. Every single day. Every single day. This is not an exaggeration. Every day there are new videos coming out of the Christians celebrating that they got another Jew away from God and closer to their Yoshke. Uh, and, they t- and they all seem nice because they believe in something. I wish the Jewish people were as passionate about the truth as the Christians are passionate about the lies. But unfortunately, the Shaim, Ahurim, Muslim, like Ephraim Goldberg, are going to get in the way. Why? Because the, 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 the image that he has given himself the image of Satan has given him is that people think that he's righteous. People think that he's right. We have a lacha. A lacha tells us who's right and who's wrong. It has nothing to do with image. It has nothing to do with anything else. We have a lacha. A lacha tells us this event is forbidden in any way, shape, or form. Whether it's to promote Israel or it's to promote Christianity or it's to promote the Torah itself doesn't make a difference you're not allowed to have christian missionaries in a synagogue there's no there's no if ends or buts about it. there's no ashkafa there's no nothing there's no disagreement here and again in the next 24 hours i assume i assume that rav Schechter is going to have to address whether the letter is real or not quite frankly i don't care if he says it's real or it's not real because we already know the truth we already know that the event is forbidden. It really, it's more for you guys than it is for us. I already know what the truth is. I already know what needs to take place. The event needs to be t- uh, uh, shut down and uh, canceled, and Ephraim needs to be fired. Whether that's going to happen or not, only Akadosh Baruch Hu knows. What I'm here to tell you guys is, listen, stay away from these wicked people, just like Moshe Rabbeinu told, Korah, told the people at the time of Korach, Stay away from these wicked people, lest you get punished just like they do. But again, we don't mean punished like someone's going to kill you, someone's going to beat you up, someone's going to do anything to you. Do not threaten anybody physically. Don't harm anybody physically. Don't do anything other than simply delivering the truth in a paper, in an email, in a, in a, uh, a, a, I don't know, a text message. That's it. We can tell them what's allowed. We can tell them what's not allowed. We have no permission whatsoever to harm anybody. We're not recommending for anybody to do that. We never did and we never will. Why? Because we have God. And God is the only one that's allowed to take the law into his hands because it's his law after all. And eventually, people like Ephraim Goldberg will have to face that law. Thank you again for listening. Thank you again for the support. Thank you again for learning Torah with us. Be'ezrat Hashem will have good news coming in the next couple of days from this uh, event being canceled perhaps, or even more so from us being uh, able to go back to a normal life that doesn't have to deal with these crazy people that send cops to our house because they don't want us to speak against their uh, idolatry. HaKadosh Baruch Hu will bless each and every single one of you. Chaim Arukim, Shlemi, Meleim Torah, Mitzvot, Miut Chasadim. Please pray for the Boca Raton community and all communities around the world to be protected by HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself from these missionaries, from this idolatry. Because in this generation, as the Gemara says, En al milismoch ela elavinu shebashamayim. We have nothing to rely on other than our God in heaven. May Hashem bless you and protect each and every single one of you. Call to When we had him at Boca Raton Synagogue uh, with Rab- Rabbi um, Goldberg, um, we had a great time with him. There's so many things going on. We see the Jubilee year coming. 
Yes. This mid to years coming. Yes. What does it have to do with Israel? Israel is very important. It's at the center of God's heart. Uh, everything started in Israel. It's now culminating with Israel. I really believe God is about to move. He's moving supernaturally, and God's move has to do with Israel. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the glory of the Lord fell. I, I, I was in uh, the church with you when the glory fell several years ago. And the Lord spoke to us, God is pouring out his glory upon the church to provoke the Jewish people to jealousy. Paul said in Romans 9, the glory belongs to Israel. Solomon saw the glory. Uh, um, David cried out for the glory. And I think that it, it, God is pouring out his his presence. In other words, we need to listen to the signs and the four mm. blood moons, but this is our greatest hour. In the midst of darkness and deep darkness, arise and shine, for God's glory is about to be poured out upon God's people, and I believe it's going to be a sign to Israel. You see, Israel has Judaism, and it's, that's a beautiful religion. They don't need religion. They need the reality of a living God who's working in signs, wonders, and miracles. Mm. Jews yes. ask for a sign. Yes. Mm -hmm. We are living in a convergence. Mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. loves mm -hmm. Israel. It was God's firstborn. God's covenant with Israel never ceases. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an irrevocable right. covenant that was given by God with uh, the nation of Israel, Jerusalem, as the undivided capital of Israel. And just as God made a covenant with the church, and I think there's a convergence of the Jew and Gentile as the one new man in this day. We're really in the birth pangs of the Messiah. Even the Orthodox community is feeling that the Messiah is coming back soon. And we're feeling those birth pangs as well. But as we conclude this segment from South Florida, from the United States of America, joining with our brethren throughout the world, we will not be silent.